Hi, Owen Madam here with the Cisco WebEx TAC team. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to deploy Azure SSO for WebEx using OIDC instead of SAML. This has the benefit of not needing to deal with an IDP or SP certificates and uses cloud endpoints to authenticate users to WebEx services. As a note, if you're currently using the Control Hub Azure AD wizard in order to sync users, then you can enable SSO through that portal, which does the same setup here, though through the existing applications found there. First, log into Control Hub, navigate to the Organization Settings page, and then scroll down the page to Manage SSO and IDPs. Then, choose Add an IDP. On the Select an IDP page, choose Open ID Connect, then select Next. You're then asked to configure the metadata. From here, copy and paste the redirect URL from Control Hub, and then navigate into Azure AD in order to perform some further configurations. Once inside Azure AD, navigate to App Registrations then choose New Registration. Here, you're asked for some information. First, enter a name for the app and choose account types that are allowed to use the app. Where it asks for a redirection URL, choose Web and then paste in the redirect URL you got from Control Hub earlier. Then, click Register. From here, you're taken to the App Registration Overview page. First, copy the Application Client ID to a notepad. A couple of things need to be modified here. First, navigate to Token Configuration. Click Add Optional Claim, then click ID and add additional options appear. Choose Email and then click Add. You'll then be prompted to enable API permissions, which you can do by checking the box and clicking Add here. Once you've done that, you must see one claim configured now. Navigate to the Certificates and Secrets tab. Click New Client Secret and a window appears. Here you can see it asks for a description of the token and the length of time the token must last. You can choose how long this lasts, and this can depend based on your organizational requirements. Once done, click Add. Once the token is created, copy the value field. As an important note, do not refresh this page without writing this token down. Once you leave this page, you cannot retrieve this token again for security purposes, and you'll need to make a new one. Next, return to the Overview section. Select endpoints at the top of the app and a side menu appears. Here, copy the OpenID Connect metadata document to a notepad. Now, we're going to pull all the information together that you created and collected. The name is up to you, however, paste in the fields gathered earlier and place them into their respective sections in this configuration. You can configure just-in-time provisioning if you wish, however, it is beyond the scope of this guide. Once done, click Next. Here, you're asked to test your SSO configurations. You'll be asked to consent permissions if this is your first time testing. You can grant these permissions now for your whole organization. If it worked, you must see this screen showing SSO succeeded. Return to the SSO configuration tab and choose Next. If you want to configure SSO routing rules, you can do this here or click Add. Once done, you're taken back to the Manage SSO and IDPs window and you can see your new SSO configuration set up. Your configurations are now complete. If you wish to perform further testing, configure a routing rule, and then attempt to sign in via an incognito window. Thank you for watching.